Hi, I'm Grace Gallagher. I'm the executive director of the Cameron K. Gallagher Foundation, and I am here with Miles, and I am so excited to introduce you to Miles. He is an incredibly talented young man who's done some pretty impressive work, including working with Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. And I'm so excited for you to hear more about his project journey. Um, but until we get there, I would love to have Miles share with us a little bit about your background and who you are and all the talents from composing to directing and everything you have going on. Sure thing. Um, so as Grace mentioned, I'm Miles Brown. Uh, I started doing video production when I was probably back in eighth grade. I played soccer and I used to make my own highlight tapes. Um, and then going through college, uh, I did day in the life videos for my college teams when I was at Notre Dame and UNC Charlotte. And then after that, I went to VCU for graduate school where I got my master's from the Center of Sport Leadership in the School of Business. And there I designed my own independent studies and uh, did videography for the VCU Athletics um, Athletic Department in video. And from there, I started to kind of hone in on my craft and all while this was going in the background, I would write and record my own music. Um, and then uh, after COVID hit, I started to really focus on the video production side. And I started my own video production company called Milo Video Productions. And that was back in March of 2020. So oh, wow. it's been <laughs> pretty recent. <laughs> But uh, the growth has definitely um, happened pretty quickly. I've surrounded myself with people who are a lot more knowledgeable than I am in the video production uh, arena. So uh, just learning from uh, as many people as I can and continuing to, to develop my craft. And that's, that's pretty much what I've been doing for the last year and a half or so. I love your, I love the way you say my craft because in your craft you have so many talents. Like, <laughs> you know, sometimes your craft is just one thing, but you've got, you write music, you produce films, you video for other people, you have so much in you that it's just not one craft. It's yeah. so great. It's several, it's, it's a lot of fun. Fortunately, like, uh, Video production and music go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, let me try to be a doctor and, and do music. Like those two kind of right. don't complement each other. But whenever you see a video, there's audio. Yes. So it just fits perfectly. So well, it does, but are... a lot of times that's two people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> and true. And you are that one person with so many different, I, it's kind of like you're a, a crystal. I used to, um, describe Cameron as a crystal where there's so many sides and you know there's light and there's dark and there's brilliance and there's a little edginess there and um, and that's kind of kind of you you're a crystal and you just keep turning and every time I talk to you I find something new about you that is just so so exciting and awesome but I really want what I want the world to know about is this project called journey and um, it's so powerful and it um, is very personable um, it is just the some of the clips that I've seen um, just is truly impactful and I think where this film can go can make such a difference in so many people's lives so i'd love for you first to give just like a kind of a broad overview of journey and then maybe we can dig into it a little bit more okay um so journey is a visual album and essentially what a visual album is it's uh music videos that are supporting the storyline so i wrote the music at those seven original songs and they take place in a unique area of Richmond, Virginia. And um, they go chronologically and tell the narrative. And the reason why I wrote Journey is because um, my best friend, John Ferguson, actually passed away um, earlier this year. Uh, we got news of that in January. And I had no idea how to process my emotions about it at all. Um, and then one night I just, sat down and wrote out how I was feeling because I couldn't talk to people about it at that stage. I wasn't really ready to. Um, so I wrote 
uh, five songs of the seven oh, that wow. first night. Oh my gosh. Um, and then the other songs that I wrote kind of just filled in the storyline as mm -hmm. it needed, as it developed a little bit more. Right. Um, and yeah, that's essentially what it's about. It's about coping with loss and uh, exploring the city of Richmond and finding areas of peace within the city to and communicating that to other people. So, you know, maybe people can't vocalize how they're feeling at the moment, but if they can practice escapism through nature in different parks in Richmond, or just experience things like the Pipeline Trail, mm -hmm. or go down to Boulevard, yeah. or Bird Park, things right. like that, and just explore right. a little bit, maybe it's expressing themselves through music, or literature, or dance, mm -hmm. all different avenues, music, um, just trying to open up that conversation so people don't feel like they can express how they're feeling right away um, in words via conversation, they can express themselves in different means. One thing I think is really cool about this is that um, it's not just your journey, you know, and sharing your journey really, really speaks to so many people. And sometimes, you know, talking comes from our voice, but we can speak through music, we can speak through our bodies moving in dance, um, we can speak through murals in the city. Exactly. There's so much that is out there that sometimes um, when you're in pain, a lot of people are like, I don't have the words to describe, but perhaps you can get out there and do a dance. Exactly. And that's an outlet. And that's something I know I've seen in one of your clips. Yes. Um, in one of my clips, I have an interpretive dance. Uh, I have an outro that's very theatrical for one of the songs called Cruise. And that song, I'm deliberating how I feel. I'm finally acknowledging that something isn't right in the narrative. And it's been kind of bugging me throughout, but I've been in an avo avoidance stage. And finally, I'm acknowledging everything mm -hmm. and it comes to like a climax and instead of me being on screen I actually um, found a dancer uh, her name's Aaliyah and her best friend was a local rapper named Braxton and mm -hmm. she passed away and they were on the Henrico High School dance team together and in order for her to have a moment to dedicate how she was feeling to her friend, I allowed her to do an unchoreographed dance to express how she was feeling to the outro of the song, Cruise. And I just captured it with a singular spotlight at night so that the focus was on her mm -hmm. and the mural of her friend, so. It is incredible. It is an <laughs> incredible, incredible piece of this project. And you know, something comes to mind is that even someone who maybe doesn't dance or doesn't sing, and they, um, they watch this kind of artistic expression of pain and resilience and pain again and resilience because that's life, right? Like we yeah. fall down, we have pain, we struggle, we get up, we, you know? And so I think that just kind of watching this and experiencing this might give that person a little bit of hope but more importantly, a little bit of um, knowledge to start to be more in touch with their own feelings, right? Definitely, definitely. And a, a lot about what Journey is trying to communicate and start that conversation about is find your avenue of how you can express yourself in a positive manner. Mm -hmm. And it's different from ev like for everyone, you know? Mm -hmm. My journey is completely different than someone else's, but that doesn't make mine better or worse than mm -hmm. someone else's. It's or just different, it's unique. It's not less and it's not more, it's exactly. yours. Yeah. Right? Um, and so not to kind of, um, I'm gonna take you to a little bit of a vulnerable place, if that's okay. 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 That's fine. <laughs> but I think this is really important for especially a lot of young people, you know, finding a lot of people are in pain and finding that place of maybe not it being all better, but a little bit of relief, mm -hmm. right? A little bit of maybe the pressure isn't suffocating or um, taking over your entire life. So in the very beginning, when before you started writing these songs. Do you remember a moment that um, that you just knew, I, I can't sit in this longer? You know, we do need to feel our pain. We cannot mm -hmm. hide from it. But do you remember a moment that, and what kind of happened where you were like, I need, I need to do something with this pain now? 
For sure. Um, so as I represent in the storyline, there was that avoidance stage. I was just kind of overbooking myself with projects and wasn't paying attention to how I was feeling. And it took uh, one night where, again, I couldn't tell anybody about how I was feeling. And I think it was about 11, 12 p.m. And, or 11 p.m. or 12 a.m. And I was talking to my sister on the phone. And she told me, you know, it's okay if you express how you're feeling, if you let it out, because we understand like how hard this is for you and we're here for you. And I think the first time that I actually acknowledged how I was feeling was when I broke down and started crying like by myself at my desk mm -hmm. on the phone with my sister. And that was the first step to, to growth and finding some sense of closure was just being in the moment and actually feeling what I was feeling mm -hmm. and crying about it and having that like cathartic moment of emotion that I had been avoiding for months, really. Um, so really just crying about it and sitting in it and talking to somebody about it made it a lot easier to start these conversations right. that we're having now. And then your craft could come out, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you could use your, your artistic abilities to help grow, exactly. to continue to grow, to continue to process. Cause you know, grief and pain and so much in life, it doesn't have a period at the end of the sentence. So this is something that you have to live with, but exactly. you can live a life of joy with pain mm -hmm. and using, um, using different ways of expressing and letting it out. You know, two things that I hear that I think is so important we try to talk to people in our work about is, you know, reach out reach out to somebody even if you don't even know how to say how you're feeling right have a trusted person in your life that you can just reach out to and what your sister did is so beautiful as she said it's okay it's we can't fix this for you but it's okay yeah. and so you got the permission and it's almost like that avoidance piece is fear too because oh gosh if i have to face oh, this was, what's going to happen i was absolutely frightened about right. what I would feel if I let it out or said anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk to my mom about it. Like I didn't talk to anybody, the normal people that I would confide in. Um, but yeah, it was my sister at that moment. And she then was... you started writing these songs and as you started writing the songs, did the whole kind of, I don't know, outline of this visual album start coming to you or did it, how was that process? Um, Honestly, when I was writing the songs, I had no idea what I was writing. Um, I just like was inspired to write mm -hmm. something. Um, I don't even think I knew at the moment that it was going to develop into anything. I just hadn't written in a while. Right. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to write whatever I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And from uh, the songs that I wrote that night, I analyzed them and looked at them like pretty objectively with one of my friends. And we started reading through some of the lyrics and I was like, I didn't even know I was feeling that at the time. Right. And from looking back at the lyrics, I started to develop a storyline mm -hmm. and it initially wasn't even as moving as what it is now. Right. It was like, like a game, like, oh, you move from this and you, it's a different location in Richmond and uh -huh. this. And then I was like, this is much more serious than that. Um, after I started reading the lyrics of the song Hollywood, which I dedicated to my friend John, I was mm -hmm. like, I have to make this a project that can help other people who are going through what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. um, so then the storyline developed more um, and just became a little bit more intricate and uh, developed. And then I started hiring videographers to really capture my vision. And then I mm -hmm. got all the drone footage because I wanted it to be um, I want to be able to show the vastness of, of the project, its reach, but also just um, the scope of how big I want it to feel right. and showcase the city of Richmond. Um, so I just went out almost every weekend and just, you know, let go of my drone, started flying it around and capturing footage of the city. 
and yeah, we kind of went from there. So you had to be really, um, you didn't even know you were practicing mindfulness. I didn't. Because you had to be so present, like to go outside at night and be like, oh, look at the moon. And in your mind, you're like, oh, that light on this shadow would be so cool in my film. Yeah. And you're, you're having to be very, very present. For sure. And what you can do in your everyday life from that is huge. Just mm -hmm. reminding yourself like, this is, I need to worry about what's happening right here and right now. I think that was the main thing is um, living in the present and experiencing things in the moment is just one of the major themes of journey. Um, a lot of it is we're caught in this cycle and this loop of you have to have this smile over here. You have mm -hmm. to talk about this. You have to be friendly to this person. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, move around here and navigate and act this way. Um, but the conversations that are built into the storyline mm -hmm. even talk about the importance of pulling over and stopping yeah. and having a conversation with your friend mm -hmm. and just living in the moment and experiencing what's around you to give you that extra capacity to be able to attack some of the stressors that might be in your life. It really is like you are just traveling through Richmond and I like how you use your hometown to find peace in different areas and so many different places and hopefully people that watch this will also go into their hometown and realize exactly. that there's spaces in, you know, in their hometown that they can really find some peace or maybe not maybe they find more um of another emotion but they can let it out there mm -hmm. you know maybe if you are in a park and it feels dark you can run yeah. and then you get that out there's just so many options and you are just showing through your art you are showing so many people how important it is to feel how important it is to pause and how important it is to use whatever you have inside of you to navigate through that because we all have something. Exactly. You know, and there's many times in, in our lives where we feel like we don't, that mm -hmm. there's nothing there and we're depleted, but you're never, never really depleted to a point. You can, you can always find something visually or um, it, a song is so important. Music like it can bring, important. it can bring you joy. Sometimes when you can't cry, you should listen to a song that makes you cry, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To get it out. For sure. It's really, really amazing. Well, I am so excited about this project, <laughs> and it is being premiered in Richmond. Yes, it is. Can we talk about that? Tell me all the details. Yes. Yeah, so um, it's going to be premiered January eighth. Uh, 2022 in Bird Theater mm -hmm. on uh, Cary Street in Carytown, um, and that should be at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. So super excited about that. Um, the maximum capacity has been limited to 800, so I'm more than confident that we can get that filled. So, yeah, I know we uh, can. I'm super excited about it. Um, excited for people to be able to experience everything how it was meant to be experienced, like in a community with mm -hmm. other people being able to lean on other people, start mm -hmm. that conversation, and mm -hmm. have a bunch of people watching it at one time. And um, I'm just really excited for my, uh, my journey to be communicated how it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. and with you know, the quality speakers yes. in the theater, yes. and, and the visuals are gonna be represented on a big screen for everybody to see, so. I, I can't even express how happy I, I am about that. Well, I am so happy about <laughs> it. And I know that the people in Richmond who get to see it in January will be blown away. Yeah. And I can't <laughs> wait till um, it gets out there for the rest of the world to see. For this sure. is so powerful. This is such a important, important thing to talk about. But it's such an important thing to watch because as you went through this and you were growing both personally and emotionally and and mentally and everything you are getting all of your audience to grow as well exactly and this is called journey but journey doesn't mean that you're done oh for <laughs> you sure. have so much more to do yeah with this. it's it's just beginning honestly um and i want to help tell other people's journeys as well mm -hmm. and this is this is my avenue to be able to do that even seeing the growth of um, my friend who I started the project with, the person I told you that I called mm -hmm. and um, you know talked through the lyrics with. I've been working with him since February and 
we talk every single day about the project. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about it this morning. Mm -hmm. We were filming yesterday in Maymont. So good. Um, but just seeing the growth that he's had, like he yeah. talked to me a couple of months ago. I didn't even know he was going through anything personal in his life. Mm -hmm. And um, he was talking about, you know, seeing a therapist, different things. And he said, every time that we go out and shoot and film, I feel better. I feel like I'm in the present. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned all of this to my therapist of, of the happy times that I've been having mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the fact that this project can do that to the different people who are working on it right. just shows how powerful it really can be. Yeah. Um, and we had a moment where we were both extremely emotional because we had that that release of, of emotion, that cathartic feel when we were filming one day over an overpass on a street that's closed off by um, Bryant Park mm -hmm. and it's pouring down raining oh, and we're just wow. blasting the music of the song. Oh, and man. I had filmed my scene, but you know, I could tell because mm -hmm. you know, we've been friends now mm -hmm. that something was kind of bothering him. So I took the camera and allowed him to have his own section. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's, that's, that's a special incredible. moment. And he has, it's my journey, but because I love being behind the camera, I film him too. Mm -hmm. So he has his own journey as yes. well that I'm going to put together and give him. So don't. Oh, <laughs> don't tell anyone <laughs> that but, is yeah. so great but also think about that like how close friends you are and you didn't know like all he was going through exactly and in this project gave him like the the space to be able to to share that with you and we need to look at all of our friends and everybody out there in the community knowing that every single one of us has a story for sure and we do not know each other's journey mm -hmm. and a lot of um a lot of our journeys have been really difficult but you keep moving and you keep going and you keep processing and we have inspiration from people like you to show us how to do it and how important it is to express yourself and i know that john is so proud of you um i think he has been super close to you during this entire time and um, i think there's even more to come with with your story and with your friend's story and how this has impacted other people. And I know you have impacted me and meeting you has been a real, real, real treat in my life. I'm excited to work with you on anything and everything we can. Thanks. And I know that we will do good work together, but I know that you have a light inside of you that is really special and i'm excited for the world to see it thank you i appreciate it really really excited Thanks. so january 8th <laughs> bird <laughs> theater <laughs> everything. i know but you know what it's yeah. okay right for sure i'm not afraid to let it out it's, no it is what no. It is, you know. and you know what um tears are just showing our love that's what it is and um and even tears of anger is rooted in love Right, so if we're angry, we don't have our loved ones with us. It's just because we love them, and um, and it's the human heart, and it's it's the human condition, which, who can hurt so much? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can hurt so much, but there is um, there's there's beauty in in pain because you you found it and you are delivering this amazing amazing album for all of us to witness and and be a part of and thank you thank you for all the work you're doing thank I you so much for having super me super special thank you i appreciate it